Well, it's been a law in Idaho for about mm, three weeks now, but the last chapter on a House Bill 500 has yet to be written. We followed the Fairness in Women's Sports Act throughout the 2020 legislative session. It was a bill, now law, that keeps transgender women and girls from playing high school and college sports in the women's division. With support from the ACLU, Boise State student Lindsay Hecox, a transgender woman, sued the state of Idaho over the law. Simply, it prevents Lindsay from going out for the women's cross-country team at Boise State. Well, she and her legal team argue it's not fair and discriminatory. Shortly after that, two Idaho State athletes came out in favor of the law and wanted to make a case for it in federal court. Well, today, a judge heard from each side of the issue in that courtroom to consider if they could as well as a few or consider if they could testify and they want also the judge also wanted to consider a couple of other motions. Joe Paris joins us to explain what actually happened today in court and when we could expect a decision on any of those issues. Yeah, that's right, Brian. Today, no official decisions, but uh, they did touch on three real major topics, and we'll get to when they'll get that decision here in a minute. But those three major topics we want to talk about first, the state of Idaho is looking to just have the entire thing thrown out. They want this suit against them thrown out, and if that were to happen, the law which went into effect on July 1st, it wouldn't be affected in heading into fall sports. Trans women could not play high school and college sports here in the state of Idaho. The second thing they went back and forth on in federal court this morning, the ACLU, which is representing uh, Lindsay Hecox, as well as another student athlete here in Idaho, they want to get a preliminary injunction on the order so that the law will not go into effect. It would actually be temporarily suspended as it would be figured out at a different court situation. But if that were to be the case, Lindsay would be able to go out for the Boise State cross country team in the fall. Now, the third piece of information they talk about here today that Brian touched on, there's two student athletes from Idaho State University, and they are uh, they are not transgender women. They're biologically uh, born women. Now, they want to be involved in the case so they can testify in favor of House Bill 500 and explain why they think that it should be on the books in a law here in Idaho. Now, they're being defended in court by the Alliance Defending Freedom. Now, the ADF's legal counsel, they were part of the uh, back and forth this morning, and they actually gave a little bit of a summary for us this afternoon about how they're feeling again after your arguments i'm really not going to speculate on what the judge is going to do i think he listened he asked intelligent questions and he kept his cards close to his vest um, needless to say we think that um, the law is is valid and serves an important purpose so we're optimistic that the judge will um, the judge will up uphold the law and, and not enjoin its enforcement in the coming year, but we all will wait with interest uh, his ruling by August 10th. Now, August 10th is an important date because that's when high school sports in Idaho really starts rolling. So they want to have a decision before that. The so student athletes will know their status heading into fall sports. And of course, COVID pay plays a role in what fall sports will look like. But that aside, again, supporters of House Bill 500 say that this is about defending women's sports because they believe that transgender women, that they have an advantage over other women. Now, with that said, a big conversation during the legislature session this year was about defining who and who is not cisgender and who is transgender. And some of that came down to some controversial ideas about how you would confirm that. Would it have to be through an invasive medical procedure, an invasive medical examination? Well, today, actually, the state was arguing that the statute in Idaho code, it doesn't mandate that, and that a doctor's note saying that a person is a woman, that would suffice. Now, the ACLU says that piece specifically, they're on board with that. Here's why. The state seems to suggest that somehow House Bill 500, despite all of the statements that were made in support of it during the session, was actually intended to, to, to make it easier for transgender athletes to participate on women's sports teams. I don't think that's what the sponsors intended, and I don't think that's what the bill says, but if indeed the state is willing to agree that, that uh, Lindsay Hecox and other trans women and girls in Idaho can simply get a health care provider's note, uh, then, then uh, we're okay with that regime for now. Again, no final decisions today. Brian, a decision is expected at or before August 10th. All right, wait and see. And especially if just all they would need would be a doctor's note that says they are a female, and that's kind of how that's going to be playing out, I guess. We'll have to wait to see how this decision comes down. But am I understanding that correctly, Joe? 
Yeah, that's how I understood it as well. But uh, really, the statue and everything has to be straightened out. So I think we'll learn a little bit more on August 10th.